Hi there, thanks for joining us. My name is Katie and I'm with RV Share. Today we're going to talk about the different types of RV classes, but specifically how to choose the right one for your next vacation or a short term rental. There's a ton of information out there about purchasing an RV. Um, but not enough about renting it. And you know, when we have a short term rental, we have a lot of different requirements and it's going to look a little bit different. So we're going to walk you through today, all the different types of RV classes, the pros and cons of each of them in order to help you pick the right one for your next vacation. So before getting into the different types of classes, I just wanted to remind everybody that RV delivery is a great option for anybody. It is not just for people that are new to RVing. It's a great way to experience any type of RVing without really having to worry about towing or parking or having an additional vehicle on site at your destination. I've done it. I love it. I cannot recommend it enough. The owner of the RV will deliver it to your campsite or your location and help you with the hookups and getting it set up and do a walkthrough with you. And then at the end of your vacation, they'll come and they'll pick it up. Owners love this option because they know and are very comfortable working with their rig, so it does mitigate some damage for them. And renters love it because they don't have to worry about extra fuel costs or towing it if they're not very comfortable with that. And ultimately it just helps you get a started on your vacation faster. So again, delivery is great. We love it. We're seeing more and more people use it on our site. So we highly recommend it. Okay, I swear I will be getting to the classes soon, but it's really important to note that overall, RVs are really broken up into two buckets. You have motorhomes and you have towables. Motorhomes have their own driving space and their own engines, whereas towables, as kind of their name implies, you need another vehicle to, well, uh, tow them along to your destination. The difference is critical for a variety of reasons, but camping with a motorhome versus camping with a towable is gonna be a very, very different experience. So for instance, you might have a fifth wheel trailer with you and it's luxurious and spacious, but you can't really access that until you're done driving for the day. Whereas if you have a motorhome, you can kind of pull off on the side of the road as you need, kind of access the things in the back um, but with a motorhome you also have to consider either towing or having an additional vehicle uh, when you're at your destination site and you also have to consider that because it has its own driving space it's going to take up more of that living space when you are camping so class A, these are gonna be the bus-like rigs that you see and or associate with celebrity tour vehicles or maybe even some stereotypical motorhomes. They're really large. They can range in anywhere from 20 to 45 feet. Some of them can be even longer than that. And the big ones can sleep up to eight or 10 passengers. So really, really large vehicles. Uh, the class A's can be either diesel or gas, but either way, they're gonna pack a really hefty punch in terms of uh, fuel costs. So that's gonna be reflected in your delivery fee. So that's something to note. Uh, the other thing to think about is that these are really expensive rigs for owners to purchase. Um, they are some of the most expensive ones on the market, which means that that is also going to be reflected in your nightly rate. Okay, a couple of things about class A's, especially if you are new to renting RVs or RVs in general, you're going to want to get some practice in before formally driving one of these guys. Because they are so long, they are going to have a lot of blind spots, they're going to have wide turns, and they're going to have slower stopping times. So you're really going to want to be comfortable before getting behind the wheel of one of these. And we do not recommend this for first time drivers. There are other options that are out there on the market that are probably going to be a better fit and still hit all the needs that you that you want. Class A's are great for families that want a little bit of elbow space. They are great for people who are renting for longer periods of time um, or they're great for people who really just want to enjoy the outdoors but not sacrifice any of the luxury. Uh, these class A's are really interesting because they have their own defined areas for living and sleeping, which means they'll have a full kitchen, a dining space, bathrooms, and probably multiple sleeping areas. It should also be noted that class A's can require a lot more pre-planning and less of the spontaneous style of camping adventures. Uh, and again, that's going to be mostly due to their size. A lot of RV campsites are going to have less of the longer campsites available in general. And that holds true for national and state parks, which are really popular destinations. And on top of that, those parks usually work on a first come first serve basis. So if it's not yours, if you are not driving around it, and if you're not comfortable driving around it, it's can be a little bit difficult to find that spot. So which is why if you're renting, you're gonna wanna do a little bit more of the pre-planning up front. 
There are still plenty of places that can easily accommodate Class A's, including some fantastic luxury campgrounds. We have listed in the description a link to some of our favorites that you should check out. And really, Class A's are just such a great experience in and of themselves. They are definitely worth giving a try. Class B's, also known as sleeper vans, also known as camper vans, also known as hashtag van life. Class B's are gonna be some of the smallest rigs that are out there, uh, which means they're gonna be a little bit more agile than your Class A's or Class C's. But what that means is also you are gonna sacrifice your spacious living interiors. They are still gonna have everything that you need, like a bed, a small kitchen, a toilet, some storage, and they're gonna be a lot easier on your wallet in terms of gas because they're so small. But it's worth noting that they are very expensive for owners to purchase, which is gonna be reflected in your nightly cost. Class Bs are gonna be your adventure vehicles. They're gonna be great for singles, they're gonna be great for couples. And the best thing about the Class Bs is that they can just go to places that the Class As and the Class Cs just simply cannot go. You are never going to have to worry about being able to back up in this vehicle or navigate down a windy, unpaved road to your really remote campsite, which is honestly where all the best campsites are. Uh, the other thing that's really great about these vehicles is that because they are so small, you can easily drive them around town and run to grocery stores and just run errands as you need. They fit in regular parking spots. Class these are the most in-demand RVs on RVShare.com and it's no wonder why because they really sit in between the Class A and the Class B. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more easy to drive, something that's a little bit more fuel efficient but still has all those really nice amenities, Class C is going to be a really good option for you. They are built into a regular truck bed which means that it's oftentimes more comfortable for people to drive versus the big bus-like Class A's. The other thing to think about is that they are pretty good from a cost standpoint on a nightly rate and they're also a little bit more fuel efficient. So the bus conversions can be a very wide variety of vehicles. They can be DIY school bus makeovers or they can be something like a Provost that is custom made. The newer coaches look like a bus and a Class A. The difference is that they're built totally from the ground up. All of the benefits and drawbacks of Class A's are usually going to apply to the bus conversions as well. The main point of difference is going to be the style and the uniqueness of each rig. So because there are generally less of these on the road, we don't have a specific filter for them on RV Share, but you can find them under the drivable section on our website. Okay, so we've made it through all the drivable options that are available on RVShare.com, but before we move over to the towables, please remember to like and subscribe to this video and to our channel. So like I said at the top of this video, you are gonna need an additional vehicle to tow a towable and usually a pretty powerful one. For some of the heavier towables, like a fifth wheel, you might need a half ton or even a one ton truck to pull these along safely. And even for some of the lighter towables, you might be able to get away with an SUV, but it usually has to be a stronger SUV. All I have to say is that you're gonna need to do some research up front to understand your capabilities from a towing standpoint in terms of what your vehicle can tow and also in terms of the hitches that are required to tow some of these vehicles. So for towables, let's start with pop-up trailers. Pop-up trailers are going to be compact and feature canvas sightings that need to be physically unfolded and set up before you can use them. Uh, Pop-up trailers offer a huge variety in shapes and sizes. So for example, they can be anywhere from eight feet to 15 feet folded, and then when they're unfolded, anywhere from 16 to 32 feet. They can sleep anything from two people to eight people, and they can weigh anywhere from 700 to 3,000 pounds. So a huge variety, and they offer a lot in the way of flexibility, affordability, and kind of like that rugged readiness but you are gonna be sacrificing some of that comfortable living space and some of the higher kind of luxurious amenities that you're gonna see in the luxury RVs. So these are great for people that want more of a rugged style camping experience, but believe me when I say they are still a really big um, upgrade from tent camping or car camping. Okay, so next up in the world of towables, we are gonna have travel trailers. 
Travel trailers are gonna be bumper towed from your vehicle and they can be hooked and unhooked relatively easily. Travel trailers are gonna offer superior living space at an affordable price because the manufacturer is not dedicating any space or any manufacturing costs to install an engine. And so what you're gonna see is that a lot of travel trailers will offer a slide out, which will extend the spacious interior of the unit, along with full kitchens, full baths, big queen beds, nice couches, all at an affordable price. So because these are more affordable for owners to purchase, this is usually going to be reflected in your nightly rate as well. So a toy hauler is going to be a travel trailer with a garage built into the back to bring along your toy. And when I say toy, I mean something like an ATV or a snowmobile. So how cool is that? And just because they have utility does not mean that the inside of the vehicle is not comfortable like a regular RV because they can be. So if you are somebody that wants to be ready for anything and have their toys available at hand, toy hauler is going to be a great option for you. And if you don't have these toys, but it sounds really interesting to you, some of our owners actually offer these as add-ons for your trip. So what that does is just take that extra fee of the rental of that toy and add it into your nightly fee. The one thing that is to note about it is that toy haulers can either be a motorhome or they can be a towable, which means that your sleeping arrangements and your nightly costs are going to vary widely. So just do the research and see what's available in your area. Okay, on to fifth wheels. So fifth wheels are going to be some of the largest RVs available on the market and also some of the heaviest, which means that you're going to need a special truck to tow and an in-bed hitch to tow as well. These are not for beginner towers, just an FYI, uh, but what you will see is that the fifth wheels typically have some of the biggest interiors and some of the most luxurious interiors. So they are great for families that want a little bit more space to spread out. Um, and because the fifth wheels are not as expensive as the class A's to purchase, again, going back to the installation of the engine costs, uh, what you're gonna see is that fifth wheels are actually pretty competitive in their nightly rate. However, what you will typically also see is that because they are so heavy, they're a little bit more difficult for uh, owners to move around and tow. So you will see that reflected in the delivery fees in case you choose delivery. So just a couple of things to think about as you're doing your research. Okay, and the last towable is a truck camper. And what a truck camper is, it is actually built on the top of a pickup truck. And so these can either be aerodynamic pop-ups that come up, or they can be hard tops that have the slide outs when you park. So we've gone over a lot of different RVs that are out there for rent and available on RVShare.com, but now you might be thinking, well, how do I actually hone in and choose which one is right for me and for my needs? Well, we have a recommendation of thinking through like three general areas. The first one is gonna be consider the basics. So understand how many people that are gonna be with you, how many sleeping arrangements do you need, understand do you want to drive, do you want to tow, do you have the right type of vehicle to tow safely, uh, do you want to use the amenities within the RV, something like a kitchen. Th those are all really important things to think about. Another good thing to think about is your budget. A lot of these have really wide ranging budgets for a nightly rate. It's another thing that you're going to want to consider as you're researching. The second thing to consider is the type of vacation that you want. Are you just going to rent it for a tailgating event? Do you want to go boondocking and really be off the grid for a little bit? Or do you want to stay at a resort that already has a lot of amenities available? And the third thing to think about is the length of time of your trip. So is it going to be two days? Is it going to be a week? Is it going to be a month? All of that is going to impact how comfortable you're going to be in the vehicle over the longer period of time. So those are the questions that you should think about as you're looking and exploring the different types of vehicles out there. Okay, that is everything that we have today. Thanks for hanging in there. I know that this was a really, really long video, but there are so many opportunities and so many different types of vacations and RVs that are out there that we felt was really important to go through everything kind of nitty gritty. And we hope you found this video useful. So if you did, again, please like and subscribe to our channel to learn more about RV camping. My name is Katie. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.